Good afternoon on the road here. And then in a new month, November, I got the inexpensive gym memberships. That's been keeping me going. I got those um, renewed. And the end of fall is transitioning into early winter and the air is very cool and crisp it's got a chill and this is a time of year where eh, it's not t-shirt weather that's for sure but um i find the sleeping very very good and here i am on my sleeping bag <laughs> figure right there oh look what i got all of these they're like day old and i got them out for a dollar well, that'll keep going in good calories. Wow, oh, even more. Wow. I got all that for one buck. Look at that, huh? I got that. What else did I get for my bin bin tonight? A pencil. One of my one of my favorites around here. They're pretty popular in this part of PA. Pickled eggs. Hard boiled eggs has been pickled in uh, beet juice. Some of them are better than others. And then I got some macaroni salad from Johnson's Grocery, which is a little store. It's a little local, you know, cute little local place, you know. A lot of places in this town are still kind of like the way they used to be. It's old, local, mom and pop. It's got a, their own local, unique little touch. And that's what I like about this area. Still got its deep family roots. And uh, as far as the rest of the country, compared to the rest of the country, from what I see, these people are like angels. I know I've mentioned that before. It's true. Good people up here. Even if some of them are a little stuck up and it's a bit of a good old boy network, that's true. But uh, these darn good people. Not Even the ones that, you know, kind of ignore me and give me that, you know, little look, you know. They don't bother me. If I drop my wallet, they'd probably say, hey, hey, you drop your wallet, dude. You know what I mean? Yes, there's your clowns and your little druggies and stuff like that, but they're pretty low in comparison to the good. And uh, the prices are right reasonable. You can, you know, it's livable here. And you got the 24 hour access gyms. One is only 20 bucks a month, and the lady knows me, so thanks for kind of letting me uh, have it without, you know, the expense. And uh, another one's only 30, and. I don't know. It's, it's not like an outfit, a na national outfit, to where it's got more of a personal touch. Easy to kind of just hang around at night and charge my phone and nobody's bothering me. So it comes in handy. And here I am at the uh, stealth camp. Yay! Month number six. I'm going to try to get as much of this month in as I can. I have some money set aside for my what I plan, anyways, for my uh, storage unit. I want to get that paid off for a whole year. All at once. Bang. I don't want to fool around with month to month or anything like that. I, I want to get it done. I want to get it over with in case the uh, U.S. dollar was dropped by the uh, or dumped by the uh, World Bank or if there was some kind of a economic crisis to where the American dollar took a major hit and there was crazy turns of events all over the place everything's jumping all over i want my storage unit which is my safety net to especially to get through winter i want that in place because no matter how cold it gets if i have that storage unit noah road can always go in the storage unit get a new sleeping bag get new boots get new i don't sleep in it i never do such a thing outside of it, it was a life and death emergency of course but I mean, there's plenty of little woods real close to the storage unit. So if it got 25 below zero, that's not going to be the end of Noah Road if I got my storage unit. I just go down by the storage unit, go in, grab myself a two... I got 25 below zero sleeping bag in there right now. I got another sleeping bag that's downfilled, and that's good down way below zero. I got blankets. I've got jackets. I got tents. I got a little extra food and supplements. I got 150 or so, if not more, pairs of socks that are in totes. 
that I've been kind of collecting and stashing over the last few years. I've had the storage unit since 2011. I just keep it going, keep it going. And I got boots. They're not new. So, yeah, once I get the storage unit paid off this this month, that's going to take be quite a financial hit. But uh, I got food stashed, and I plan on stashing more. And it's just going to be a real kind of a, a practice living rough month, you know? Because I want that storage unit taken care of. Because no matter how cold it gets, I can just go down to the other town where the storage unit is at, and then I can camp out real close to it. And I could break the camp down in the morning, put the camp back, you know, put my uh, equipment that I use to camp with and to stay warm with in the storage unit because it'd only be maybe four or 500 yards walk, if that. And then I can walk all the way into town, which is like a five mile walk. But uh, I could walk into town and I can sit in the Catholic church, you know, they always leave the doors open, or I can go in the library, you know, there's always some place I can go, I can walk around, there's a teeny, it's a very small mall, but it's still a mall nonetheless, I can go in there and do laps and stuff, you know, during the hours when it's uh, daylight, and then when it gets close to dark, I walk all the way back to my storage unit, and go in, get my tent, set it up, put, it, and then go, you know, get all the heavy duty gear, too heavy to carry around, you know, get so much, and I'll be fine, and I, that's what I do when I'm out in the winter, and it's full-blown middle of winter, and I stay near the storage unit, and I might stay there for a month or two and do that, I mean, that's, a, you know, unless I decide to shelter up somewhere, but I'm not going to shelter up this month, because I want to take care of my storage unit. And then next month, I want to take care of getting, I want to, I want to get some extra boots like this, like two pairs, you know? And then that's going to be a hit. I want to get some good protein powders and superfood powders and just be stocked up a little bit just in case something happened to my, you know, to somewhere down the line, I, I can have something as a safety net to kind of run to. That's, you know, how I think. But, yeah, for the rest of this month, you know, I want to hang on as long as I can here because it's not going to get too bad. This is lovely sleeping weather. It's a little chilly for, you know, but in the tent, tents are 10 degrees warmer. Blocks the wind for the most part. If it ever got too windy, I could always put the uh, rain fly up. Well, shoot. Now I have a, maybe you can come to dinner with Nora Road. I'm going to say a blessing over this food. Pray, Hashem, Heavenly Father, that this food be blessed according to the needs of my health. I pray, God, that you will help refresh and renew my mind and my heart. I will always seek to be closer and closer to you. I pray that the light within me will grow and shine in such a way that my tolerance and love for others will grow and the light within me will illuminate and will grow to include more and more other people and more and more of the world around me not compromising which is with the standard of my religious path but definitely growing to include more people so i don't remain so resentful and i can find a way to find peace in the middle of any chaos with that said, I pray, Lord, that you accept my humble apologies for all the things that I have done wrong. And in light of those, Lord, that are far less fortunate than I am, I am truly grateful that you have blessed my means of support. You have not only allowed me to survive, but thrive. And I'm especially grateful, Lord, because I really don't deserve it. And it is by your grace. I pray you give me the grace, the time I need, to come to a better place of repentance. And to have a better heart. For others, of course. But also for you. And this food be blessed. May I enjoy the company of strangers who may be watching this video. In light of your name, Lord, I say, Amen. Well, 
anyway it's just a prayer off the cuff i've been trying to get into a more prayerful habit i want the food that i eat to always be blessed and to eat it at least in honor of god's name even though i don't really utter god's name when i really wouldn't want to I can say God, I can say Hashem, but I don't try to find out exactly what name he would be called. Hashem is uh, the name I like the best. Mm. Yeah, we're starting to get hungry. I haven't been eating all that fancy or all that super healthy. I'm a big fan of pickled eggs. about taking a nap but it's starting to get late well no road's doing all right i'm well fed i'm healthy my tent's still here and it appears that the creator of the universe has a has is merciful toward me and patient with me and I have had a little bit of turbulence lately with my spiritual path. Not, you know, crashing and burning or nothing, you know, but uh, I've definitely been going through some seasonal transitions with them. It's all part of the growing process. All of it. I mean, I wouldn't want to crash and burn, you know, in regard to my faith, but a little bit of turbulence. It just, it's it's a, a process of humbling the person, I think. And I'm less judgy. I mean, I have my certain area, you know, I mean, I have my limits, you know, of what I can, you know, be real tolerant for, and I mean, I can only be so elastic in this world, you know, but, um, you know, I'm definitely, you know, finding ways of uh, seeing things, viewing things that are a little less rigid. Like, I don't care what anybody says. I don't believe everybody's going to hell just because they don't have, I don't know, maybe because they're a little bit in biblical error. They're sincere. Doesn't mean that they're going to be judged favorably for that error, but, you know, ultimately the circumstance, the person's ability, the person's history, maybe some people need the errors that they fall into and they find themselves into in order to reach God, maybe without the little errors that we can, some people who maybe know better, see in people. Some people need spiritual training wheels. So some people find God a little bit in ways that they, they have to be more flexible and elastic or else they just can't believe it. Of course, if there's one way, then it's they're going to be somewhat judged off of that, and it can't be in their favor that they needed training wheels, spiritual training wheels, and they needed to be more spiritually elastic, or else they'd end up as atheists. 
you know, they didn't, nobody asked to come here. So, I mean, the effort and the condition of the heart based on the circumstance of the person's life and their history and their ability or and lack thereof, you know, the time and age, you know, the, the, the generation that they live in is also, you know, I mean, what do their eyes have to see every day? What gets crammed down their throat? So, it's kind of interesting. I, uh, I'm not as rigid as I was. Even recently, I have, you know, made more improvements that way. Finding myself more humble and a little more elastic. Yet still being very honorable to my past. I just don't buy that if somebody's a little bit in error here and there, even if it's a rather ugly error, I think the history, their general conduct, their intention, the heart condition, mind condition, and... Um, their ability and circumstance, all of that stuff kind of like plays a, a part in making the person who they are. And I think all of those factors, you know, play a major role in ultimate judgment when it comes to man being judged by God, if you will. But when you know better, you know, then those training wheels have got to come off. There's no doubt. If you know better and you learn, you know, and you raise your consciousness to higher levels of enlightenment, you know what I mean? Well, you, you get there. Then you're not allowed to wear those training wheels because you're judged according to your ability and your circumstance. So let's say you got a blast of knowledge and you go, oh my gosh, what I was doing was like inadvertently idolatry. It's so insulting to God. I didn't know. Okay, well now that you know, you're not going to get away with it for one second longer. So then the standard for you, you know, has to be raised. The bar has to be raised and the judgment is harsher. The judgment for some of the prophets and stuff would have been greater if they messed up versus somebody like us. You know? We're not at the level of a prophet. Certainly the, you know, like Isaiah, those words last forever. We'll never speak words that's absolutely, you know, you know contributed to ink in the Tanakh. <laughs> Give me a break. Well, anyways, I'm rambling. Spiritual ramblings. And it's getting to be a long video. But it's been uh, kind of a joy, hopefully. It uh, wasn't too much of a mess of a spaghetti. What did I say? I'm a, I got a few pearls of wisdom in a mess of spaghetti. <laughs> That's what I feel like sometimes. Anyways, I'm going to finish up here, and I'm going to contemplate some thoughts. And I just can't see too far, you know, the road, you know, as far as the road ahead for me. I can't really make this prediction. All right, I'm going to do the best I can and hang on to, uh, I'm going to try to hang on here to the end of the month. And then I might want to move around a bit in December. And then maybe toward January, I'll think about sheltering up if I can find a place real cheap. Okay. Well, anyways. Stay in the light. And, you know, I believe and I hope that you know that we can find peace in the midst of any storm and no matter what happens you know it's hard as it it's easy to stay harder to live but whatever happens is ultimately um 
for the greater good in the end. All right. No road over. Out for now.